CrowdStrike. You've probably heard about it. The cybersecurity disaster that hit over 8 million devices last weekend and caused a non-insignificant portion of the world's commerce to grind to a halt in a matter of hours. There's a non-zero chance that you are affected by it in some way. Whether your work computer was down or you were stranded at an airport for days, the CrowdStrike incident proves that kernel mode software is an unnecessary liability, even if it's presented as a solution to a legitimate problem. You see, CrowdStrike markets their Falcon Sensor software as a proactive solution against malicious programs. You can boil it down to like malware and unauthorized access, whatever. The problem arose because Falcon Sensor is installed at the kernel level. It's actually a kernel mode driver, and it means that the program has nearly complete unfettered access to your system. But it also means that if the program crashes, it'll take the entire computer with it. And that's what happened last week when CrowdStrike pushed an update to their malicious definition file and it basically put 8.5 million devices into an inescapable blue screen of death loop. Now this is a gaming channel, so what does any of this have to do with gaming? Well, it just so happens that the video game industry has its own Falcon Sensor style software. Easy Anti-Cheat, BattleEye, EA Anti-Cheat, Vanguard, and many, many others. These are all kernel mode drivers, just like CrowdStrike's Falcon Sensor. But there's a critical difference here. Falcon Sensor is software ostensibly created by cybersecurity experts. Guess what video game developers are not? These companies are not security experts. Now they probably have very talented and even well-informed developers, but the real experts stand to make much more money at a larger specialized firm, something like CrowdStrike, for example. And yet we allow these companies to have complete, privileged, operating system level access to our PCs. That's the fact of the matter. And I find this especially concerning because they're also not trustworthy. Now, trustworthy can mean many different things. And it's important to note that when I say trustworthy here, I'm talking about data breaches. Epic, Riot Games, Microsoft, Sony, Electronic Arts, Epic again, Sony again, Nintendo, Electronic Arts again, Epic again, and many, Many countless others have been hacked time and time again. These hacks have led to personally identifiable information being leaked online, identity theft, doxing, and more. And data breaches can have disastrous consequences for players in their personal, professional, and financial lives. And that's scary. But what if I told you that these companies write terrible software? Now, unlike productivity apps or websites or smartphone apps and other software, video games are mostly smoke and mirrors when it comes to stability. I mean, it's no secret that Bethesda writes some of the jankiest code in the business, but that's just because they wear it on their sleeve. They're not alone here, though. Games rely on hacks and bodges more than any other type of software because they're on tight deadlines, even tighter budgets, and the game really only has to appear to work. Studios often make jokes about how their games are held together with duct tape. This is an industry-wide thing, and this is how games have always been, and it's how video games will always be, because there's no incentive for commercial, proprietary video games to be coded elegantly. Now, let's talk about the Apex Legends hack from earlier this year. During the live North American Finals, someone hacked into the private lobby for an ongoing finals match and enabled cheats live on stream for two professional players in the tournament. This was wild. It was unprecedented. It made headlines all over the world, and it really makes you wonder if these companies know the first thing about cybersecurity. Interestingly, Apex Legends is a game that uses Epic's Easy Annie Cheat, and Epic was quick to state that, quote, we have investigated recent reports of a potential RCE issue within Easy Annie Cheat. At this time, we are confident that there is no RCE vulnerability within EAC being exploited. So they're denying any culpability. But it's interesting that they said reports of a potential RCE issue in Easy Annie Cheat because what's strange about the whole thing is that there's been almost six months since this hack took place, live on stream, 
during the finals of a major esports competition, and I cannot find a single postmortem or breakdown of how the attack was actually carried out. If it exists and I missed it, leave me a comment below, but I've looked and I cannot find it. The fact is, games are just not secure. Most games are not written in a way that's maintainable, and the studios producing them just can't be trusted. And look, trust is important. We're back on this topic. Not only does a company need to have a good reputation when it comes to the code that they write, but they also need to have a history of cybersecurity best practice. And I know, we've already covered this. However, it's also extremely important that vendors have transparency in the provenance of their software and the decision-making process of their organization. Yet two of the biggest kernel mode anti-cheat solutions perfectly positioned to say, spy on, influence, and exfiltrate sensitive player data are owned by the Chinese government. Now look, I'm not saying that China's Communist Party is an authoritarian regime with ambitions for not only world domination, but also the destruction of the human soul. I'm not saying that. But I'm also not not saying that. The CCP is an adversary to the West, but also an enemy of individual privacy, and it's contemptuous of the human condition. So the fact that Tencent, which is an indisputable arm of the CCP, wields undue influence over Epic Games and thereby easy anti-cheat, it's concerning to me. But they also outright own Riot Games and their controversial, always watching kernel mode Vanguard anti-cheat software. Like, yikes man, what are we doing? Vanguard starts when Windows boots, even if you're not playing Valorant, and I just find that highly suspicious. Suffice it to say that I don't believe the CCP can be trusted, and therefore neither can Epic Games nor Riot Games. And given all of this, the numbers tell a chilling story. Valorant had over 6 million unique players. Not last month, yesterday, as of writing this. Again, CrowdStrike's Falcon Sensor took out 8.5 million machines. And yesterday, Valorant had some 80% of that daily active number. And remember, Vanguard is active while you're playing Valorant or not. July 2024 saw 20.1 million unique players, meaning that Vanguard is potentially installed on at least 20 million devices. And then again, we have Fortnite, which has had consistent peak concurrent players hovering around the 2 million mark for the last couple months. Just seven months ago, they had 11.6 million peak concurrent players. And that's just Fortnite. Easy Any Cheat is in more than just Fortnite. A zero day exploit for any one of these kernel mode anti cheat solutions is a cybersecurity dirty bomb, potentially larger than the CrowdStrike incident. And it's just silently ticking away in the background. Easy Any Cheat, Vanguard, BattleEye, this software is dangerous. It's unnecessary. And worse yet, it has low-level, high-privilege access to our most intimate devices, with direct access to read and write all of the RAM in your PC. If a malicious actor were to exploit the privileges of an anti-cheat solution, they would be able to sniff out sensitive details like encryption keys for end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps, they'd be able to steal credit card information, and even worse. And it's not just the politics of the matter. These companies can't be trusted. They write terrible software, and they have no idea what cybersecurity actually is. But now that we know how dangerous kernel mode software is, are we going to fight so-called anti-cheat on our devices? Or will gamers continue to ignore this evil because we just want to play games online? Well, that's my rant. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, maybe check out this video here where I talk about uh, why Nintendo wants you to emulate their games. It's another good rant. Uh, I really enjoy that one. Check it out. Yeah.